There we go. All right, Kay, how are, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm great. Thank you. I do appreciate you waiting for me. I know I, I got a notification from you saying that you joined. So I'm like, oh, she's waiting. She's sitting there waiting I'm for me. Chilling. So. I'm, I'm in between sessions right now. I have like a couple hours. So I'm just take your time. I'm just oh, okay. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, yeah. So how are things in, uh, in Fullerton? I think that's how you say it. Fullerton yeah. in California. Yeah, um, things are good here. Um, you know, I feel like, I mean, things aren't really going back to normal yet, mm-hmm. COVID, but, um, you know, they're more normal. Um, I don't know. I kind of forgot how it's like pre-COVID. So it's yeah. just normal, I guess, for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's that's the same. I think it's going the same for everyone. I mean, I think everyone's kind of in that, the whole world right now is in that transition of, you know, we kind of got out of the, the, the whole lockdown and then we were enjoying everything and now we're kind of back into it again. So yeah, it's like a weird middle ground, but I don't yeah, know. yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so how is like, I, I know I kind of saw some videos of uh, you training today, but like, I'm not sure if that was you training, but it was on your story anyway. So how is like COVID affecting your gym that you train at, at the moment? Uh-huh. I mean, it's not affecting it too much if I'm being completely honest. Um, you know, every couple of weeks or like every once in a while, the gym will like shut down, you know, and we'll do like some deep cleaning and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, um, I feel like when everything first started, um, you know, there were smaller groups and everyone kind of closed down 100%. But now it's kind of at the point where, I mean, especially like, I feel like Orange County is a little more lenient um, when it comes to like SoCal. Um and I mean, we're, we're running at full capacity. Um, and that's, you know, my coach's choice and, um, I'm still training, you know, I'm still obviously cautious if someone is sick, like our coaches yeah. are like, if you feel sick, you're not, don't come in. Like if we see, see someone look sick, we're like, okay, go home. Like, and same thing with me when I'm like training with people, like if I'm noticing someone's like coughing, I'm like, okay, I'm going to say way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're still cautious, but I mean, we're training. Yeah, of course. And I think like you can't really let fear take over, or take control of your, your career. Right. Yeah, And that's the problem is like, um, you know, I remember like thinking like when everything first started, like, okay, how am I going to do my camps? Like, am mm-hmm. I going to have like, only a couple people? But it's like, the thing is, even if you turn to the couple people, like those people are going to be training with other people. And then those people have work and those people have family and it's like, everyone's, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, yeah. you can't stress out about that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm taking the like, I mean, honestly, it's kind of the same precautions I took pre-COVID. Like, if you look sick, like, I'm not going to train with you. You know what I mean? So it's like, exactly. it's like, it's normal stuff. Like, it's not, nothing really changed for me. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, you just have to assume that the people aren't sick if they're not showing symptoms. And I know other fighters have talked about it and they get kind of freaky or they don't get like superstitious if they hear like someone got sick, sick at their gym. They're like, oh, should I cancel my fight? You know, okay, um, yeah, I'm not like... I don't freak out about that kind of stuff. There's no point. You're just going to stress yourself out for no reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, like how difficult was it transitioning from, you know, normal events fighting and then, you know, COVID happens and now they have all the protocols in place. How, how, how hard was that to transition? Um, honestly, it's to me, it doesn't make that big of a difference, you know, mm-hmm. like, even as far as like the, the no crowd goes, like, I don't care as long as I can do what I love to do, which yeah. is show up fight. Like, I mean, I will admit, I hate the COVID test, like getting oh. stabbed in the throat, like four times for like the fight. Just, I can't stand it. But I mean, other than that, like I'm, I'm happy. You know what I mean? I'm living my dream. I'm, I'm fighting for the UFC. I'm, I'm doing what I love to do. <clears throat> So there's not much I can complain about. You know what I mean? It, it is a little weird, like walking out to an empty arena. But at the end of the day, like a fight's a fight. There's cameras, there's lights bright in our eyes. Like, so it's the same thing to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think the UFC has really done a good job kind of taking care of you, uh, yeah. of, like of the fighters, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think too, like, you know, at the same time, you know, you're still going out to doing what you love to do. So, and I think that's what really matters for most fighters. I mean, I don't think I would want, yeah, I wouldn't want something shoved up my nose, but, (laughs) (laughs) but um, yeah, so we'll, let's jump into your, the start of your MMA career here. So, I mean, obviously, you know, like, I know I heard like, once you got to watch Ronda Rousey fight at UFC 190, that was like, kind of like the, was that kind of like, 
um, the start of like you was that your like your transition to MMA or did you start or did you already think about it? Yeah, I had never trained before. Then I played softball like really competitively. Yeah, um, you know, from like nine to up to like started training and then I stopped. Um, so I had never I had never even had the interest. You know, like my family like we used to go to a lot of watch parties for UFC events. Like I remember going for like Chuck and Tito and like I th- I yeah. hated it. I was like, why are we watching this? This is dumb. Like, they're just trying to kill each other. Like, this is stupid. But I don't know what it was. But, like, when I saw Ronda, you know, it wasn't even, like, when I saw her fight. It's, like, when I saw her walk out. Um, Like, I don't know. It was just something that captivated me. And immediately I was like, that's what I want to do. So I don't know what it was about it, but it called me for sure. Yeah, and I think with Ronda, she really paved the road for for these young women to to get into MMA because – you know, for the longest time, it was pretty much a, a, a man sport. Um, and then once she kind of uh, came in, it really did. It really opened up the idea. And I mean, if you look now, I mean, um, there's so much competitiveness in the women's divisions now. And it's insane. And I love it. I love seeing and personally, I like watching the women fight more in general, because you girls can actually put it out for three, five rounds, whereas get some of the other guys, it's like two rounds and they're done. And <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that Ronda, what I think it was is like, because there were a lot of women fighters during her time or even a little bit before her, you know what I mean? But I yeah. think she kind of had the the personality and the like the spark behind it. She kind of said whatever she wanted to say and didn't really care what people think. And I think that kind of yeah. caught my attention too, because you know, you're always taught like to be super proper and like polite mm-hmm. and as a woman, you know what I mean? And I feel like, um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of like trash talk and like being disrespectful, you know, right. but um, I think it was cool to kind of see a girl step out of that, the mold of like, like you have to say certain things, you have to be a certain way. She was just kind of like, well, I am who I am, whether you like it or not. So, and I think that's the, the thing that kind of set Rhonda apart from everyone else. And I think that's what caught a lot of people's attention too. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, and I'm really glad to see with all the women's divisions really opening up. I mean, a lot of people they'll message me about like, oh, what do you think about this? Like this fighting flyweights, they got no one fighting. Like it's all, it's not stacked at all. It's like, guys, give it a couple of years, let it fold yeah, out. I mean, you look at, I mean, you look at the division you fight in, like the straw weights. I mean, stacked. it's crazy. <laughs> and now it's like, geez, like anybody could beat each other in the top 10, 15. Like it's crazy. I mean, honestly, even like, a lot of the new up and comers are like kind of a different breed in my opinion, you know, mm-hmm. like it comes to me, Corey, even Cheyenne, like um, I think a lot of us like we're really young, but like we're really hungry. And it's like, um, I don't think people expect much out of us, but I honestly think mm-hmm. we're just dangerous. Obviously we don't have as much experience as some of the girls at the top, but um, I mean, I think we're, we're kind of going to come shake up the division, the more like the newcomers come in, you know? yeah and i mean you kind of talk about um like the they get the the more the younger these fighters are coming in i mean for yourself i mean you're like the i think the youngest to to win in invicta history so how does that make you feel um you know it's awesome because uh you know when i was little i didn't really like look up to many women you know especially like um when it comes to women like you know like in like the public eye you know i Mm -hmm. feel like um you kind of get caught up looking at a bunch of celebrities when you're a little girl like actresses and like Mm -hmm. models and things like that so I think it's pretty cool to like you know be young and like um have other little girls like look up to you and see that you know what I mean and like maybe I could be the Rhonda for someone else but at a younger age you know like I have little sisters and I know like it's cool like that they see like me doing something like fighting like versus like something that everyone else kind of does you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like I didn't even know it was an option when I was that young you know what I mean and like I didn't see any women doing it so I think it's cool when you see like all of us young women like kind of up and coming and inspiring and it's gonna be like a little snowball effect and I think that's gonna be cool yeah and I and that's what I love about and that's again like that's what I love about having the women um all the female divisions opening up more and more because they're you you, you girls are getting more exposure and and that's just translate that's translating into young uh like younger girls to want to to do that in their yeah I see some of these girls like videos of them training and I'm like man they're like yeah 
I'm like, wow, they have better technique than me. Like, it's going to be crazy <laughs> by the time, like, you know, like everything is evolves, evolves, evolves. Like, it's going to be crazy when it comes to, like, the women's divisions. Like, it already is, but it's just getting started. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, have you seen that video? I think it's this girl. She's from some kind of, like, Russia or something. But she's, like, punching yeah, up the I'm street. Like, and I'm like, I would bust my knuckles up so yeah. bad. I'm not even wincing. Like, that's that's crazy to me. Like that's some kind of like female. Uh, I think that's like some female Khabib shit going on yeah, there. Like exactly. trained in Russia, young age, you know. I know, it's so crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I mean, like you, you being in in Invicta, you know, you had a couple of really good, impressive wins. Did you think after that point, like UFC was around the corner? Like, can you kind of talk to me about how that all worked out, getting that UFC contract? You know. Um... You know, I don't think it's any secret that, like, Invicta is the place Mm -hmm. for, like, women who are developing, you know what I mean? Right. Um, And Shannon and the whole Invicta staff, they are amazing. Like, they, like, they do, they take such good care of their athletes, you know? Mm -hmm. And Shannon, all she tries to do is, like, give everyone any opportunity they can. And, um, you know, working with them was was amazing. So, like, um, but I had a problem with, like, I'm very, like, I look too far ahead of myself you know or like i used i'm getting better but um so when i was in invicta like my whole goal was like i'm gonna get to the ufc i'm gonna get to the ufc and i felt like i would overlook fights right in front of me you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i would say like my last like three or four fights with invicta i finally kind of like took a step back because i'm kind of reckless when it comes to taking fights um and stuff and i just got a manager so i'm hoping that'll like help regulate me uh because i would fight for free tomorrow if the ufc asked me and that's a problem you know, um, so uh, I don't know, like I had a couple like bloopers, you know, when it comes to fights, like I didn't have the best moments, like, but it helped build my character and it kind of taught me to like look at or focus on like the task at hand, you know. Um, so when I actually got the call, it was like during COVID, like I, I fought in March and then everything kind of shut down. And then I, uh, you know, wasn't really planning on fighting. I had only, our gym barely opened up, like, and it was kind of secret, you know um so I'd only been training for like three weeks at the time and I remember Shannon texted me and she was like hey you're gonna get a call from Texas uh you need to answer and literally within seconds I get a call from Texas and I was like oh I know I know what this is yeah. and I got the call and like it's when I was least expecting it you know mm-hmm. um which kind of a good lesson for me because I was like always like counting on it counting on it counting on it and then I just kind of like so you know whatever like I'm just gonna do my own thing focus on myself my development as an athlete as a person and then, you know, the wins came and then on top of that, the call came. So it was, it was a crazy moment for sure. Yeah. And, and, and you, you said it right. And uh, like, did you have like nerves going into your first fight? Like, what? Well, like it wasn't your first rodeo. No, it wasn't my first rodeo. And, um, you know, I don't know. I feel like everything happened so fast, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it was on six days notice. So I got the call on yeah. Sunday and I fought on that Friday or, or that, saturday or something and um everything happened so fast that i don't even really think i had time to kind of like understand what was going on so it is good and bad but like um you know to me fighting is fighting and like whether it's invicta ufc like i'm where i want to be you know so of course like nerves come with it but i mean it is what it is once that door closes the cage closes like everything's fine but (laughs) yeah you're just like dialed in eh and at that point you're like all right it's go time or that's it so <laughs> and i mean like getting that 50 g's i mean that was like a, a, a total bonus you get you get your job in ufc and then you get your 50 g's so is there yeah. any way you got to spend that or i put that right in the savings right <laughs> i didn't even in the savings it. for me i'm just like i don't even want to i don't even want to go there because uh i actually i did move out though and i got my own place so maybe mm-hmm. that kind of that 50k for sure helped like the little cushion you know what I mean help me kind of get out on my own but That's other than that like I straight in the savings I'm, I'm not even gonna I'm gonna act like I didn't even get it mm-hmm. and I mean like just fighting on that card though I mean I mean that yeah. that must have been just awesome I mean not only did you get I mean a win you know an impressive win on your UFC debut you win your 50 g's and you get to fight on a card I mean with the main event was just insanity so obviously when you were done your fight you know you go backstage do whatever did you get a chance to watch that fight well, i and that's the frustrating part that's what i will say about covid like that is frustrating because i have fought on it was uh Jorge and hooker and then 
um i fought already on the rda felder card and yeah really good fights and i didn't i got to i had to literally go backstage like talk to the doctor whatever and then they take us right back to the hotel so it's like i had to watch it like on the phone and i was like so pissed because i was like man i was just there like i could have seen that live like that would have been so cool but i mean it is what it is it's cool to be a part of those cards either way so yeah, and and I know that uh, I know that they do like the interviews and stuff like that after. So so they take you backstage. Do they take you right to the doctor, or how does that work? Or do you go right to the oh, interviews? They take you right to the doctor. Um, okay. He checks you out. Um, you know, reports anything that you know they see or whatever, and then uh, they only take the winner for uh, like media and stuff. But okay. Yeah. right on right on. Yeah, and and I it would suck. I mean, because that was a great card. I mean, Poirier. I think after that fight, I mean, he's always been impressive. He's had an impressive couple years. He's really grown as a fighter. But after that fight, it just shown that this guy, he has, I mean, he got the belt, like obviously interim belt, but I think he's shown that he's got what it takes to get that lightweight title. And I mean, even after uh, beating like McGregor, I mean, after that, I was like, geez, I think everyone's jaw dropped after that fight. Yeah, I mean, it for sure surprised me, but like, Poirier, he's such a hard worker, and, like, every fight he gets better, you know? Um, Mm -hmm, I agree. 100% dialed into the game, you know? He's not really distracted with with too many other things, you know? You don't see him really doing, like, movie deals and, like, all this crazy stuff. Like, he's a fighter, and, like, he's another one of those ones where, like, you've seen his ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, and, like, he just – he's game. He's always game, and that's super cool about him. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with him because, yeah. um, you know, you get that kind of crap going on with Khabib and whether or not what he's going to do. I know, I don't know if you heard this, but this just kind of traveled overnight last night, but uh, they they were talking about possibly him and GSP. I don't like it. I think it's kind of yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to happen, if I'm being no. honest. Like, I just don't see it happening. Um, I would love to see like a prime GSP. Oh, my God, yeah that would be um i mean i still think it'd be an amazing fight um but i don't know something in me is just like ah that fight's not gonna happen um i mean i would watch it 1000 percent if it was happening but i don't know i don't i don't see it panning out for some reason i think well, we get Fourier, uh charles Oliveira, honestly yeah and i think that fight makes the most sense for the title i mean Oliveira, totally different guy i mean maybe like, like could be alone a little bit you know like let him kind of Cause I don't know. I feel like Dana keeps bugging him, and it's like, like if he's gonna come back, he'll come back with time. Like at least give him like a few months to like enjoy being retired. Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing. He's pushing so hard for that that thirty and zero, and it, it it's, um, he, I think he's just trying to give him anything he can to kind of get that thirty and zero. And I think Khabib's just trying to say, man, just leave me alone, brother. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i mean going back on you here so um i know you kind of touched a little bit about fighting without any crowds is it yeah. kind of nice though that the fact that like you can kind of hear your coaches throughout the whole the yes whole and, time yeah i mean yes and no because um i don't know the thing about me is like i'm gonna hear my coach's voice whether it's super loud in there or it's not super loud you know what i mean yeah. i've always been kind of good at distinguishing voices um but like the thing about like the no crowd is like um you can kind of hear the other corner a lot which is cool but like personally like i i don't like it like i remember there's a point um in both fights where you know we're fighting or moving and like something happens and like they're like oh she didn't like that and i'm like fuck you like i didn't care about that like and but then i catch myself like kind of noticing it and i'm like oh my god like stop like so for me i don't know um when i like you know, dreamed of fighting in the UFC, like, I want the whole experience, you know, I want to fight in, like, the sold-out Madison Square Gardens, and, like, have thousands and thousands of people there, so, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, but, like I said, on the flip side, like, I really don't care, because I'm, I'm fighting, and that's all that matters to me, so it's, like, it's a double-edged sword, for sure, um, but, I mean, I'm hoping, like, soon things will, like, you know, go back to normal slowly, so we'll get that whole experience, you know? Yeah, for sure, and I know, from reports of what i've heard because i know they obviously they had the a little bit of a crowd well it seemed more than a little bit of a crowd but they had it at uh 
Fight Island. And I think possibly they're trying to do that back in Vegas for the next event. So hopefully maybe you might be fighting with a crowd. It just depends on how it's going to be run. Because, I mean, Island is different. You can control it better. Whereas Vegas, you got people just coming in anywhere and it's not as controlled. So it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, just kind of uh, talking about your upcoming fight, March 20th. I mean, you're fighting che- Cheyenne Buys. So yeah. with this fight, I mean, she's on a four fight winning streak. How excited does this make you? Um, you know, I'm really excited. Um, I mean, I don't really care who they give me, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Kind of like, I'm excited to be fighting again. Um, and like being active, you know, um, but I mean, I don't know. I'm excited. I kind of was hoping, like, I know technically I lost to McKenna, but I've talked to a lot of people, even, even like in the UFC, like on the staff and like, I think everyone kind of came to the conclusion that I won my last fight. Even though Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. I, I saw that fight. Yeah, even though the judges didn't give it to me, which, like, I'm fine with, like, you know, stuff happens, and that's why, like, I don't like letting it go to decision. But mm-hmm. it is what it is. But, like, um, I am a little – just a little jaded about the fact that it's, like, um, this will be my third UFC fight and my third time fighting a UFC debuter, you know? So, yeah. um, I mean, she, don't get me wrong. Cheyenne is game. You know, I, I've known about her for a while. I'm sure she's not about me. You know, we've always been kind of like on the, the similar up and coming, I guess. But, um, and I'm excited to fight no matter what, but, you know, I'm excited for after this fight, you know, I, I kind of want to take a step up, you know, I feel like yeah. well, the three fights in our own kind of just like, like here. And it's like, mm-hmm. obviously if the judge, and it's so stupid because if the judges would have like, just given me the fight that I won, like I probably would have got a little bit of a step up. But I mean, like mm-hmm. I said, it's okay. I'm where I want to be and I'm here for the long run. So like, I'm not in any rush, like, um, but after this fight, you know, I'm hoping to take a step up and, you know, hopefully get someone in the top 20, 15, you know, a- a- along mm-hmm. there, not just kind of like float at the, like the prospect level. <laughs> well, and, and, uh, and, and you know what, you're about to answer my question there. Yeah. And I noticed that as well. So I was looking up and I was watching some of your fights. I'm thinking, okay, so, okay. I know that she lost her last fight when really she didn't win it or excuse me, she really yeah. did win it. Um, and then she gets another contender fighter. It's like, what the hell are they trying to do? They're trying to make a name off her. Like, come on. Yeah, and- I, don't, I can't tell which one it is, whether they're like trying to like, like, like build me up, like slowly and kind of just like put me on like, you know, like a steady path or yeah. I don't know, they're, like trying to like feed me like girls they want. So like, you know what I mean? I don't know which way it's going, but yeah, I don't really care, you know, either way, like, um, Whoever they put in front of me, I'm going to fight. And like I said, I just signed with a new management company. So mm-hmm. um, I won't be doing my own negotiating anymore because I, like I said, if they said, okay, do you want to fight tomorrow for free against another like prospect? I'd be like, yeah, I'm in. Like if they said, you want a t- title shot tomorrow? Yeah, I'm in. I don't care. I will say yes to anything. Yeah. anything. So now that I have a manager, I'm, you know, I'm kind of excited to like let them handle that part. And all I got to do is like shut up, head down, train, fight. And that's perfect. <laughs> all I want to do so um you know I'm excited and I don't you know now I'm not really worried about the intentions that the UFC has with me like I'm just gonna go in there and do me let my manager handle the rest Mm -hmm. I would normally I would normally ask you how uh how do you see the fight playing out I know I know no fighter would want to spoil the fight but uh like where do you see this fight where do you think this fight is coming down to um I don't know. I think we're both good strikers and we both have good ground game. You know, mm. I think about like um, us up and comers is we're really like well-rounded, you know, yeah. a lot of times you look at like a lot of the old school fighters, um, you know, they come from a wrestling background or like a Muay Thai background, but a lot of us like new prospects, we kind of started everything at the same time and we're very mm-hmm. well-rounded. So um, we both have good stand up. We both have good ground game. So I don't, I don't really know. I'm just going to go in there and do my thing, you know? Um, just like I'm sure she's gonna I don't know what her game plan is but um, you know just like with Corey like I didn't really have a game plan like it wasn't like okay strike with her then take her down or it wasn't like okay go in there get the takedown it was kind of like go do you looking for your openings like I feel like right now we're kind of all at the level where um, we should be able to like kind of adapt and like pick our opponent apart you know so Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's just kind of the plan to go in there and do me. Yeah, and I and I like that attitude. Uh, I know some fighters they try to go with some game plan. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, yeah. if, you know, of course. And um, you know, so after you you know you win this fight here, obviously me going for you. 
but um, you know, going uh, once you win this fight, um, you said you're kind of looking at the top top twenty, top fifteen, top ten. So like you know the like that's you know the division's got a lot of good names. Are, is there people that you're kind of looking at as you as you watch the There's the a events? Lot of names that I would love, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. Like I like the Mackenzie Dern fight. That's a good fight. I mm-hmm. liked the Miranda Marcos fight too. Um, if they won the game with Cheyenne, um, you know, just like like steps up. You know what I mean? Like I just mm-hmm. want every time I fight, I just want to step up. Um, and I mean Amanda Rebus, like that's a great fight, you know, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I want to like fight the best people, you know, I don't, I'm not looking to like, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd want to fight Rose right now. You know, like I've always, I always just want to like test myself because for me, that's what like fighting is for me. Um, I'm a competitive person, but I'm most competitive with myself. And for me, like, I want to see like right now where I stand with the champ, you know what I mean? Or with like the top five contenders. So when it comes to, like, who I want to fight, I want to fight the people at the top. So, but I understand there's, like, stepping stones to get there, you know. So, um, I'm just going to kind of go along with the journey. And when they offer me someone, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to keep taking those steps up until I can get my way to the top. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what's going to make you so successful is that, yeah, of course, you know, you still have to have your stepping stones. But you have that mentality that you're willing to fight anybody. And some people, I yeah. I do find under the radar, they do they kind of pick their fights. And but as from what you've said to me, you're you're ready, you're game for anyone. So when you do make your way up the top, you're you're not afraid to take those fights that other people would. And that's the thing is like you have to have that mindset of mm-hmm. like. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that, like, every, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, I'm, I would go in there and I'd whip Rose. Like, no, like, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, like, I want to fight her. I want to see, like, like, where I stand. Like, what good do I do against her? What bad do I do against her? Like, for me, like, I just want to be the best version of myself. And in order to find that, like, you have to fight the best, you know? And another thing is, like, a lot of people, you know, they, they don't have that fight anyone, anywhere, like, mentality. But the way I look at it is, like, my skill set should be able to be anyone that I fight at any given time, whether it's five days notice, three months notice, whether they're not ranked in the UFC or whether they're the champ, you know what I mean? Like, um, Mm -hmm. and obviously if you go in there and you lose and things happen, you know what you need to work on, but you should believe that your skills can, can like match up to anyone in the division. You know what I mean? And like, you shouldn't, I don't know. I think a lot of it's fear, you know? for your failure like of course it's fucking fighting is scary whether you're fighting someone not ranked or you're fighting the champion like it's scary so why not just fight everyone that they offer you you know definitely definitely and that's that's the way to go um no i know we're kind of come on, coming up on time here because i think i only got about half an hour according to this thing so um just your thoughts i mean you're fighting on this card apparently the headliner is going to be bronson and uh holland so, okay. I mean, you know, you got Holland, who's had a successful 2020 five fights, I think. And you got Brunson, who's more of the vet. So, I mean, how do you see this kind of fight going down? Have you been watching uh, both guys? I don't know much about either. I know Ke- Kevin Holland had kind of a breakout year this year. Yeah. I'm sure he's riding that high. Um, but, I mean, they're both really good fighters. So, um, I didn't even – I didn't even – I'm so bad. I didn't even know that was, like, the main fight on my card. I, it's still I'm not I don't think it's confirmed I don't know if they, do they have it all filled out like is it like I think set it's so I think filled? they're yeah I think they're trying to make that the main event so it might not be yeah. set in stone but yeah yeah um I don't know either way like that's another like super cool card to be a part of you know what yeah. I mean like lighting um card so that next step is to like get on a pay-per-view card but there you go um, baby steps i guess <laughs> yeah exactly you know we're talking about stepping stones, so yeah you're gonna make your way to that pay-per-view for sure <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh and just another thoughts uh, i wanted your thoughts on is obviously a huge fight probably maybe the biggest fight of 2021 jan bohovic and israel adesanya who you got yeah. in this fight i mean you got to know these guys <laughs> uh, yeah. um i got israel adesanya um uh, I just think he has some kind of like something special about him, you know. Um, he kind of has like that Anderson Silva feel, that GSP feel. Like um, he just kind of has that IQ and he has that knack for the hard work and the knack for it, you know. And uh, I don't know. I see him pulling pulling the W for sure. I mean, yeah, and I agree. Happy, but I see him coming out on top. 
Yeah, and I and I agree. And as much as Bohovich, you know, he's got the, obviously the Polish power and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, I mean, anybody can caught can get caught at any time. That's the name of the game. But I mean, again, like Connor says, precision beats power, and it does. And um, you know, I was really worried when he was gonna fight Costa. I was like, I was like squinting. Yeah. I was like, oh, don't get knocked out. <laughs> like I was waiting for that that just that one hook, and and he was gonna get put to sleep. But I mean, after yeah. him and Costa, I was really impressed. I was like, okay, this guy. I mean, yeah. you know, he went to he went to war with that guy with that beast. So. Or I guess we're gonna see how this how this all plays out. Um, yeah, so I guess I guess that's it. Um, so I just want to thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate you taking your time. Um, you know, I I, I would just want to say good luck with your with your upcoming fight on March twentieth, and uh, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. Awesome, thank you so much.